Hi everyone, my name's Sarah. Um, my job is that I'm what's called an ecologist and an ecologist goes out and looks for wildlife for work um, and because I'm not out there working at the moment um, and because I look for wildlife for fun in my spare time um, I'm going to show you how you can look for wildlife um, where you live too. Uh, so my garden uh, has some wildlife in it so uh, whilst you're off school I'm going to take you around show you some things that you can look out for, things that you can go out and spot in your own garden um, and then there's a Facebook page so you can let me know what you've seen um, and you can do some little projects in your own garden as well um, and see if you can get even more wildlife to come and say hi. Um, so today and um, this week we're going to be um, looking at hedgehogs. So hedgehogs are the first animal that we're going to look at um, and hedgehogs are totally brilliant um, because they love living near humans which is great for us so they're not too difficult to see or to find and they do like living in towns and cities in fact the numbers of hedgehogs are actually going down in the countryside but they're going up in towns and cities so it's really brilliant at the moment um, because it's a good time that you can do something to help hedgehogs um, where you live and there's a few simple ways of doing that which I'm going to talk to you about and also send your parents a link so they can um, find out how to make hedgehog boxes or uh, to create hedgehog highways which are really brilliant um, but first of all, I'm just going to tell you about how you might know if you've got hedgehogs in your garden. So the first thing you can look out for um, is poo. And anyone who knows me will, will tell you that I love talking about poo. And hedgehog poo is quite cool. It's about this big. I'll put a picture up. Um, it's usually a bit lumpy bumpy, really dark coloured, usually black. And it's usually got bits of berries or beetle cases, all that kind of thing in. Uh, and I, the first time I knew I had hedgehogs in this garden was when I found a hedgehog poo. Um, so it's really good to look out for hedgehog poo. It can be a little bit hard to spot because it's, it's, not, it's not that big, but it doesn't look like anything else. So it should be quite easy to work out whether or not you've got hedgehogs if you can find some poo. The second thing you can do is um, see if you can actually see a hedgehog itself, which is really exciting. And it sounds like that might be quite difficult. Um, so when, when I was a kid we used to let our dog out at night and the dog would run away and disappear um, and we wouldn't know where she'd gone so we'd go out and, and see if we could find the dog and she'd be out there and from a distance it looked like she was hopping around going mad but when we got closer you could see that she was kicking uh, a hedgehog and the hedgehogs when they're scared they curl up into a little ball and they're really prickly in fact they're the only prickly um, animal mammal that we have in the UK um, so my dog was touching her with her paw and then jumping back again. Um, so when I was young though, there was about three, uh, 30 million hedgehogs. Uh, now we're down to about less than a million hedgehogs. So the numbers have gone right down and it's really important that we all do something to try and help our hedgehogs. Um, so if you're lucky, you might still get to see a hedgehog. The best time to go hedgehog spotting is about 45 minutes after it gets dark. Um, and the best way to do it is to go outside and just have a listen at first. So the first time we saw a hedgehog in our garden um, was when Richard went outside um, and he was just doing a little bit of tidying up, finishing up in the garden and he heard some noises and he came to get me and it sounded like a, a snuffling noise um, and a load of rustling. And hedgehogs are not, they're not that small, they're about that big. Um, so if you think about something that size, rustling around trying to find food, they can be quite noisy. Um, they can also make noises as well, which I'll also um, try and find a clip of and, and send out. Um, and so you can actually hear hedgehogs. Uh, and then when we came to investigate, we found the hedgehog. And now we see hedgehogs in our garden, maybe once a month, something like that. Uh, we're really lucky. Um, and we think they probably live under our neighbour's shed. Um, but you might be able to find them in your garden. So if you want to go hedgehog spotting, about 45 minutes, 50 minutes after sunset, it's quite a good time to go out um, and see if you can, can find any. Um, even if you don't go out and try and find them you can still try and create some spaces for them to come to um, and the more places hedgehogs have to hide the more hedgehogs will, will be able to help. The, there's three golden rules with hedgehogs, three things that they need and the first is hedgehog highways. So to create a hedgehog highway um, you have to have a gap of at least th at least 10 centimetres but ideally 13 centimetres under any fences. So hedgehogs travel between a lot of different gardens in one night. In fact, they can go through as many as 20 gardens in one night looking for food, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. So the first thing you need to get hedgehogs in your garden is a way for them to get in. So we're really lucky 
We have one fence which is good for hedgehogs and one which isn't, which I'll show you in a minute. But our neighbour did, did his new fence and we asked him if he could lift it a little bit off the ground. So if you look here, this is actually a hedgehog highway and I have actually seen a hedgehog coming through this gap and it is exactly 13 centimetres, would you believe it? So um, that kind of gap is brilliant for hedgehogs. But if you come over to this side of the garden, Richard, there you go, that's, that's the gap. So this is an example of places that hedgehogs can't get through. So if you see here, the fence goes right down to the ground and there's nowhere for hedgehogs to get underneath at all. So that's not a hedgehog highway. That's a hedgehog roadblock. So you can make holes in fences and actually I have friends who've gone and knocked on all their neighbours' doors and gone down their whole road and, create, and convinced them all to make a hedgehog highway down their road. So you, you can do that and I'll send out some examples of how you can make holes to help hedgehogs get into your garden. So number one, hedgehogs won't be there unless they can get in. Number two, hedgehogs need houses. So there's lots of different ways to make hedgehog houses and I made a video which I will also uh, send out which shows how to make a hedgehog house. There's lots of different things you can use. You can use log piles which is what they use naturally. Um, you can use uh, wooden boxes. You can buy hedgehog boxes. Personally I think it's really nice to make them yourself um, and you can even use something like a plastic box um, and some bits of old wood something like that um, which is really brilliant and hedgehogs might live there, they might even have their young there um, and their babies are called hoblets which is really brilliant so fingers crossed if you can make a hedgehog house you might even get hedgehogs living in your garden and then the third thing they need which everybody can do in their garden um, is a hedgehog larder so they need some food and hedgehogs like eating things that humans don't like very much so hedgehogs like eating slugs and snails and um, creepy crawlies and bugs so they like eating worms they'll eat pretty much whatever they can get in fact they've even been known to catch mice on occasion so they, they will eat all sorts of things um, and in our garden we have a few places that are really good for hedgehog food and i'll just show you somewhere where i think our hedgehogs are coming to eat and this is our hedgehog larder so it's our really messy flower bed which um, will look a bit better once um, all the plants start growing again but there's lots of things that hedgehogs can eat in there, lots of bugs, lots of beetles, lots of earthworms, um, lots, of, lots of food for them to eat. So in your garden, you could just make, it doesn't have to be that big, it could just be a really small little corner, maybe a, um, a metre by a metre or a couple of metres, where you just don't maybe cut the grass between April and July or something like that, um, or put down a few um, twigs or logs or something like that, just to create a place where lots of insects can live. Um, so yeah, look, if you want to try any of those, let me know how you get on, send me some photos um, and tell me uh, what you've learned about hedgehogs this week. So there's a few different ways that you can make a hedgehog house. Um, the good news is that you can use almost anything in your garden. Uh, so hedgehogs, naturally, they'll use things like log piles um, or piles of wood. Or over here we have, near Richard's beer, some compost heap. And hedgehogs love compost heap. So, under the bottom there, there's some gaps that hedgehogs will go into and live. And last summer I actually found a hedgehog in here. Uh, I was trying to get some compost out and I was poking it with a fork. Uh, and I kept poking and poking and I couldn't get it out. Uh, and eventually a whole clump of what I thought was compost rolled out, but actually it was a hedgehog. Um, so I'll see if I can dig my video of that out and show you. Um, I managed to save the hedgehog, put it, put it somewhere until it got dark and then I sat here and watched it. House, probably under the shed over there. Um, so they also live under the shed, so they do like living under sheds, under buildings, that kind of thing. And um, there's also, you probably can't see that, but there's a big pile of wood just there. So we think that's where our hedgehogs are living. 
So they, they really like messy gardens. Um, and luckily for them, our garden and our neighbour's garden are really messy, which is brilliant. But you can also, if you don't want a messy garden, you can actually make your own hedgehog house. And there's a few different ways you can do that. Um, so I'm going to show you one I made earlier in a minute. Um, but I'm just making one now. So I found some bits of old brick, bits of concrete um, around my garden because my garden's very messy and I've piled them up. So what you want to make sure is that there's a bit of an access tunnel for hedgehogs to get in but to stop cats or dogs or anything like that getting in. And you need 13 centimetres. So it needs to be about 13 centimetres high by about 13 centimetres wide, which is what my boxes and then in the middle you want a space of maybe 30 or 40 centimeters uh, square so the hedgehogs can sit in there nicely they might even have their young in there and their babies are called hoglets so hopefully I'm hoping we might get some hoglets in the spring um, so now I've made the base for my hedgehog box I need to put a top on it and again you can use pretty much anything you can use some plastic if you like um, we have again in our messy garden a bit of old um, off from the kitchen from when we did our, our old kitchen and um, so I'm gonna put that on top of my hedge of base. There we go. Now that's starting to look a little bit more like a like a house for a hedgehog. And that looks a bit messy even for my garden. So I'm gonna make it look a little bit nicer by putting some logs on top of it and some sticks. So I'm gonna start with the biggest one first. There we go. And Um, really old rotten ones because then they'll be home to bugs and things that hedgehogs eat as well. Um, I even found a worm in, in, on that stick when I just picked it up. So yeah, so you can pile them all on, make it look a bit more like it belongs in the garden. It's quite cute because we're recycling some stuff that we got out of our old kitchen, so perfect. And make it home for the hedgehogs as well. We're really hoping we get some hedgehogs back again this summer and then they can eat all our snug slugs and our snails. So there we go, that's looking a bit better already. And I'll tidy it up a bit later and send you a picture. Um, and if you want to make the front look a bit nicer, you can even make a little bit of a hedgehog teepee with some sticks. As if you're making a fire, but you can put it over the front and just make it look a little bit nicer for hedgehogs. There we go. And I will finish that off later and then send you a picture. Um, if you don't have anything in the garden, there are other things you can use. So one idea I've had, which is that you can get a really, really big plant pot and then you can get a small plant pot. So this plant pot is 13 centimetres diameter, so it's 13 centimetres that way, 13 centimetres that way. And you can bury that cover this off with something, maybe a bit of cardboard or a bit of plastic or um, come up with your own ideas. It's a brilliant way to be inventive and to get rid of old rubbish that you've got lying around. Um, or I'm going to show you one that I'm, I've already made. So if you come this way, Rick. So this is my new pond that I'm going to talk about next week. And this is a hedgehog house that I've made out of a plastic biscuit, biscuit tin. Um, so I think we were given this one for Christmas um, and I didn't recycle it, I kept it and I've made a hedgehog house out of it. So the reason that we don't want to leave it like that is because hedgehogs would feel a little bit vulnerable in there. They'd maybe have cats coming in to sniff them or if you've got any foxes or badgers in your garden they could get at them there. So if we just put this in the front of it, it creates a bit of a tunnel for hedgehogs. And then the hedgehogs will be able to go in, but cats and everything else won't. And again, I'm just going to cover that in twigs and make it look a little bit nicer. And then I will send a picture. So um, if you want to make a hedgehog house, um, I'm going to send around some links with some ideas about how you can do it. Um, just be creative. Use um, anything you like um, and send me some pictures to show me what you've made.